Hi, 你们好。Welcome to my YouTube channel, Shanghai Jin. It's Zoe. I'm back. Zhou, my last name. Yi, my first. Today's topic is Zhongguo's Four Great Beauties of Ancient Time, Part Two, Huang Zhao Jun. Today we will talk about the second beauty in the painting, the tale of Huang Zaojun. Huang Zaojun's tale took place in another era, from Xi's time in Zhongguo's history. After the Cunqiu Zhan Guo, the Spring Autumn and Warring States eras, was the Qin Dynasty. Qin ended the Warring States. By uniting seven states into one empire in 221 BCE, but the dynasty was short-lived. Once again, the kingdom fell into chaotic battles between the rebellion forces for another year, and ended with Liu Bang establishing the Han Dynasty in 206 BCE. It would take the Han Dynasty another five decades to stabilize unity and promote agriculture by encouraging soldiers to return to work on their land and reducing their taxes. By the first century BCE, Han had become a highly centralized state and was one of the most formidable dynasties in history. It expanded the kingdom into a vast territory spanning to the north edge of the Taban Plateau in the northwest, and it was the first to hold the civil examination system and created the literati and bureaucratic class, a system that lasted for two thousand years. It reconstructed and adopted Kongzi's teaching, the Confucius teaching. And the moral standard is the state's philosophy, which centered on the individual's behavior to maintain an orderly society. And this is why Zhongguo never needed religious guidance to solidify its control as a Western and many other states in the world. The Han Dynasty laid down the foundation of Zhongguo's culture, which has lasted till this day. But the dynasty, like previous dynasties, was threatened by the nomads from the north. This is why the Great Walls were built early on, and then later reconnected by the Qin Dynasty. But the wall could not prevent the nomads' consistent invasions, especially the Huns, known as the Shunlu, who had grown stronger over the decades. Alongside the Han people, besides countless defensive battles to pacify them, the Han employed the Hechen policy. The Hechen policy entailed marriages between royal families of states for political purposes. The Hans would marry their princess to the chieftain of Shunlu as a conciliation policy. The idea was first carried out by Liu Bang, the founder of the Han Dynasty, known as the Emperor Gao Zu. He had entered a series of marriage alliances with the Huns, along with annual gifts of grain, silk, wine, and other luxurious items, when he first established the Han Dynasty. In fact. Hechen was also a common practice in European countries in the past centuries. Just like the English King Henry VIII, his first marriage with a Spanish princess, who he never cared for, which was followed by seven more marriages. <laughs> also, Russian Tsar Nicholas II married the German princess, and the French Dauphin, who became King Louis XVI. 
married an Austrian princess. These princesses were all political brides in arranged marriage without any consent, and most of them were married off at a very young age, around 14 or 15. Our tale of Huang Zhaojun took place during Emperor Yuan Di's reign in late 1st century BCE. When Emperor Yuan Di ascended to the throne, as was customary, the palace carried out a statewide conscription of young maidens for the emperor's harem. It was said that the palace would rally 3,000 maidens who would wait to be chosen for his nightly feng shui, the chamber affair. I don't believe there were 3,000 maidens kept in the palace, most likely several hundreds. For the emperor, it was not purely for pleasure, but more a duty for him to secure heirs for dynasty. As for the families, they knew that if their daughters were selected, the maidens would be kept in the lateral court of the palace and would likely lead a lonely, solitary life and may never have the chance even to see the emperor. Many families immediately married off their precious daughters to safeguard them from this fate. That was the time Huang Zhaojun was selected. She was born to an average family in Baoping village in Zhigui County in current Hebei province. Her maiden name was Huang Qiang, a name known only within the family. Zhao Jun was her official public name. She was well-educated, adept at playing the musical instrument Pi Pa and Gu Jin, and the chess game Wei Qi, Go in English, as well as proficient in calligraphy and painting, the four arts of a scholar, and her beauty was well known in the region. One legend says that she may have been willing to be selected to save her father, who was an official, from persecution. The procedure for the emperor to select the maiden each night was carried out by the eunuch by presenting him with the portraits of the maidens. The portraits were drawn by artists appointed by the court. The families whose daughter had been selected, were quick to bribe the court artists for them to draw favorable portraits of their daughters. But Huang Zhaojun was confident of her own beauty and accomplishment and refused to compromise and did not bribe the artist Mao Yan Shou. And Mao Yan Shou therefore took revenge on her by drawing a dot as a mole under her eye, where the tears went. It was known as a widow's mole, not a sign that would encourage any man into admiration. As a result, for nearly five years, she was never chosen by the emperor. Earlier in 33 BCE, the Shono had internal conflicts between the brothers fighting for the reigns as Chan Yu, Chan Yu is chieftain in Shodong's language. One of them, Hu Hanxie, escaped to the Han for protection and assistance. The previous emperor, Emperor Xuan Di, welcomed him in person with a grand ceremonial reception. After he had assured his safety to return as Chan Yu, the Han government sent 10,000 armed men led by two generals to accompany him along with 34,000 hordes of grain, knowing that the people of Xiongnu were facing a food shortage at the time. And the people of Xiongnu were grateful to their Chinese and the Han people. Three years later, in 31 BCE, Chinese Hu Hanxie returned to pay tribute to the Han and requested He Qing with Han royalty. In previous decades, where the Han Dynasty was not yet stable and the previous emperors had no choice but to marry daughters of some royalties to the Chinese, now 
of the Khan were well established. And in a strong position, Emperor Yuan Di decided to choose maidens from the palace on a volunteer basis as a daughter of the royal family for the marriage. But none of the maidens were courageous enough to live out their lives in the remote frontier land, except for Huang Daojun. She could see her future in the palace, a life buried in reclusion and isolated from the world, was more frightening than a life with the nomads. She had good sense to weigh her future between the two. When she was presented to the Emperor Yuan Di as a political bride to Chan Yu Hu Hanxie, Emperor Yuan Di was astonished by her elegance and refinement of a great beauty. He regretted that he had missed her among all the portraits presented to him. He then discovered the widow's mole, which the court artist Mo Yan Shou had drawn on her portrait with the deliberate intention of ruining her. It would come as no surprise that Mo Yan Shou was immediately put to death for corruption and distortion. While Wang Daojun set out her long, harsh journey to the grasslands, a lavish dowry was bestowed on her and along with loads of grains and gifts for the people of Xiongnu. Over the centuries, the most memorable image of Huang Daoquin was that of her in a long red cape, riding on a white horse, holding a pipa, a round-bodied lute, seen along her way, reflecting on her grief for leaving her homeland and lamenting her unknown future. This scene is known as Zhao Jun Chu Shan, Zhao Jun leaving the frontier fort. Chan Yu Hu Hanxie was in his 40s when they were married, while Zhao Jun was most likely an 18-year-old bride. During their three years marriage, Chan Yu Hu Hanxie was impressed by her refined accomplishments and conferred on her the title of Ning Hu Yan Shi, which means Hu Pacifying Chief Consul, for the effort she bring peace to the Xiongnu people. After his death, his eldest son, Diao Tao Mu Gao, from his first marriage, took over the reigns as Chan Yu. The young chieftain proposed to marry Zhao Jun. It is possible that he was obliged to follow a leveret custom to marry his father's consort. It is known as Shou Ji Hun, an adoptive marriage. However, it was against the Han's custom and moral code. So Zhao Jun pleaded with Emperor Chen Di, the emperor after Yuan Di's death, to allow her to return home. Weighing the political interest, Emperor Chen Di asked her to remain there and follow Xiongnu's custom. Zhao Jun had no choice and married Diao Tao Mu Gao, who was close to her age. The marriage turned out well. It lasted 11 years, and Zhao Jun never returned to homeland. Zhao Jun bore two sons from the first marriage. One died young, and the other was killed decades later by one of his half-brothers for leadership as chieftain. One of her two daughters from the second marriage, known as Zhu Shi Yimo, Princess Yimo, would later become a very powerful figure on the Xiongnu's political stage. Life in the remote grasslands was not easy, but with Zhao Jun's intellect and strong will, she was able to conquer the harsh fate she faced and earn the love and respect of the Xiongnu people. Over the years, Zhao Jun brought Han culture to the people of Xiongnu and enhanced cultural exchanges between the two people. For 60 years, there were no war or conflict between the two neighboring states. 
Han and Xunu were able to maintain peace. And for this, the people on both sides credit her effort and were grateful to her. Her tale became a popular subject for poets, dramatists, and novelists. There were 40 different versions of stories and folk tales written about her by more than 500 distinguished writers of ancient and contemporary times. Her tomb in present in the Mongolia was built by the Hans in memory of this goodwill envoy from the Han. It is now one of Mongolia's scenic spots. According to the archaeologists, the tomb is a yiguanmu, which means a burial place in name only, with her garments and accessories. The location of her real tomb is unknown. This was a customary practice for royalty to protect their burial site from being disturbed or burglarized. Among the four beauties, Zhao Jun was held in the highest respect. During the long journey, while Zhao Jun was riding through the desert, playing the pipa and singing her melancholic melody, she saw a flock of wild geese flying southward. Many of them fell to the ground. The legend says the wild geese were sustained by her beauty and saddened by her melody, that they forgot to flap their wings and fell to the ground. Thus, Luo Yan, Fallen Geese, became a symbol of her, as you can see by the title in the painting. The scene Zhao Jun Chushan, with her holding a pipa and singing along her journey to wed a foreign chieftain, had became the subject of nearly 700 songs and poems composed to commemorate her over the centuries. Here is a clip from one of the songs sung by Mei Mei, based on original singer Liang Ping and Li Jingguan's old tune lyric. The song reflects Huang Zhaojun's grief for leaving her beloved homeland and lamenting uncertain future. Can you resonate with her grief and limitation? 
What are your thoughts of Hua Zhongjun's life? Do you think she made the right choice? My next episode is about the third beauty in the painting, Diao Chan. A very intriguing story. I think you will like it. Don't forget to tune in in two weeks. Thank you again for listening. Take care. Bao <laughs> zhong.